What's up everyone, it's Aaron from Rudy Visuals and today we have a quick video for you checking out some of the new features in update two for Luminar AI. So I'll see you right after that intro. Now before we start, if you haven't seen our full review of Luminar AI, make sure you check it out in the link below. While it's not our daily driver for photo editing, we do think it's an awesome tool and highly recommended for new photographers and for people who don't have the time or the need to learn photo editing in depth. And by the way guys, if you're interested in picking up Luminar AI for yourself, Skylum are having some really big sales at the moment on some of the bundle deals, all of which you can check out using our affiliate links below. You can also use our discount code RudyVisuals for a $10 discount. All right, so a couple of days ago, Skylum released their new update to patch for Luminar AI. So in this video, we're gonna dive right in and see what's changed. So we know all about the Sky AI replacement tool already. Uh, so you can literally select your sky and here we have a very bland, there's just nothing going on in this sky. So you could literally choose any one of these overlays and add you know, skies, for example, here, let's just click on this one and it will automatically add that sky for you, which looks actually pretty decent already. Adds a little bit more character to the image and just makes it a bit more interesting rather than having this plain white sky. Uh, however, in the previous versions, uh, it could look a little bit unnatural because the light, the lighting from the sky didn't really affect the environment and particularly the water. Um, so it made it look really, really unnatural. So in this version, we now have a reflection tab that allows you to show the reflection of the sky in the water. So it will analyze the sky or analyze the actual water. And if we just bump it all the way up to like 100%, for example, you can see that it's now reflecting the sky that we've added. So if we can maybe bump this down to zero, you can just see the how that works. I find that the default setting of around 50 looks pretty good straight away uh, rather than you know cranking it up all the way up to 100. So just to show you how this works with a different sky, if we were to add for example a purple sky you'll see how it actually reflects. Now there's actually some purple going on in the actual water. Uh, so that it just makes it so much better in terms of, I mean I know this sky is completely unnatural but it just makes it better in the sense that your water now reflects accurately to what the sky, how the sky looks. So it's just a lot more natural looking, but let's go back to a more realistic sky. So if we have this nice, more of a sunset image, the sky looks a little bit too sharp in this image compared to the rest of it. Uh, so we're just going to defocus it slightly. Uh, and as we adjust this reflection amount, you can see that those nice orangey sunset hues are now also being shown in the water. So yeah, really, really useful tool here. It will make those I mean, a lot of people have criticized the Sky AI for being a little bit too unrealistic, but having this feature definitely helps with that. Let's quickly jump into the scene relighting to show you that as well as adjusting the the lighting in the waters and reflections, we can also change uh, the lighting in the whole image uh, to make it match your sky as well. So if we move the slider all, all the way up to 100, you can see because the light source is back here, Luminar AI has very cleverly uh, detected that and has made the image darker because in this kind of situation, this whole area like down here, it wouldn't be this bright because obviously in this picture, this, it was a really bright sky, it wasn't middle of the day but as we do this it makes it look like it's more like sunset or in the morning which i think already that's actually really really cool i mean again i wouldn't put it at a hundred percent but this already looks a lot more natural uh, and reflects the actual sky that you have selected so one of the new additions to the update too is that we now have this new relight human uh, slider to the sky ai tab and basically what this does is previously if you had an actual human or a person in your shot and you adjusted all these uh, sliders uh, basically the actual lighting on your subject on your human wouldn't really match the rest of the scene right so we've chosen a sky that kind of suited this picture uh, so if we go into the relighting as you can see uh, it will make the light of the image perfectly fine but the actual lighting on Veronica's face didn't change at all so it makes it look 
really really unnatural almost as if she's been photoshopped into this picture but now using this relight human slider it actually analyzes the image it finds your human subject and it will change the way the light falls on her depending on what kind of sky you have so if we see this slider being moved up as you can see it knows that there is actually no light source in front of her it's actually behind her over here so it looks a lot more natural so if we put it up to 100 you can see it's darkened her face to emulate the fact that she's actually in the shade if we were to use for example uh, I know this is gonna look really really bad <laughs> for this orange sky for example so we have the light source here again behind her and we using that relight feature you can see that it actually adds a bit of a tinge on this edge but darkens it on this side it's very subtle but again it just makes it look a little bit more natural we can also change the saturation of the relight as well okay so next up is uh, sky orientation so again another problem with sky ai was as you would add in these sky overlays you couldn't actually adjust the orientation of your skies to match your picture so for example if you had a picture that was uh We'll take this for example we had an image here that was slightly slanted we're going to make it even more slanted just to show you how this basically works uh, so yeah we have this slanted image imagine you intentionally did this for like a dutch angle or something like that now previously you'd add your sky for example here we add a sky uh, and the actual horizon as you can see the clouds it doesn't match the horizon in our image so now we have this orientation tab and we're actually able to change the vertical offset, the horizontal offset and even the rotation. So as you can see, as I change the slider, it will actually allows me to adjust to match my image. Obviously we wouldn't have our photo like this. We'd have it all straight, uh, but just to show you that uh, example, you can also change the vertical offset if you wanted to move that around and the horizontal offset as well. But again, very, very handy if you need to fix your sky and make it suit your image better. Okay, so the final thing we wanna show you here is the inclusion of texture overlays. So now you're able to import your own overlays uh, to add a little bit of things to your image. For example, you could add watermarks, you could add uh, extra objects if you needed to, bokeh balls, butterflies, flowers, whatever floats your boat really. Uh, so we'll just show you how that works. So if we go into the local masking, add and texture, and then we go over to low texture. So I have one prepared here, which is a fairy, some fairy lights. Okay, at the moment you can't see it very well. We're just gonna adjust it. So we'll go over to the place texture and I'm just gonna orientate this to match our photo. Okay, great. So if we just bump up the opacity, you'll see what we're working here with here. So I'm not really a big fan of adding textures and overlays and things like that, uh, but you can be very subtle. This particular effect is, you know, really, really subtle. You probably wouldn't even notice it if I put it all the way down. Uh, but it just adds a little bit of magic and kind of like interest to the photo, I suppose. You can find a lot of these overlays for free on, on just go on Google, really. So if we bump up the opacity to 100 and select the eraser, we can also make adjustments in terms of where we don't want uh, these to be. And if you make a mistake, literally just click on the paintbrush and then you can adjust that again. You can also go into advanced settings. We can change things like the brightness of your overlay, the contrast. You can even change the saturation as well as the hue. Again, my only tip here would be just to keep these things subtle. We also have additional support for some of new cameras like the Canon R5, 1DX Mark III, uh, Nikon Z5, Z6. There's a full list here. I'll put it put up in, on screen for you. There's also something like 70 bug fixes, so, uh, some improvements under the hood i haven't noticed any real improvement in terms of performance but we are using a very high-end pc with a 5800x cpu 32 gigabytes of ram and, a, and an ssd specifically for our individual photos all right so really really quickly we're just going to show you a few of the photos befores and afters that we've edited using luminar ai and some of these new features
Okay, so once again, if you want to purchase Luminar AI for yourself, do use our affiliate links in the description box below. You can grab some really good discounts right now and also use our discount code RudyVisuals for a $10 discount. So I think right now Luminar AI offers some really, really great features and is actually a really robust and powerful photo editor, but at the same time being really intuitive and newcomer friendly. So all of the positive points that we made in our full review, they still stand, but now we have all of these improvements as well, which makes Luminar AI yeah, even better than before. It definitely has a market for sure and I do think some of the more kind of like experienced shall we say like elitist photographers they do kind of turn up their nose uh, to programs like Luminar AI but personally I still think this isn't really who this is aimed at and for the kinds of people who would buy this you're still going to have so much fun you're going to be able to create some really amazing edits on this without having to sing you know hundreds of hours trying to learn photo editing my only personal tip is just to keep things subtle well that's pretty much the end of this video thank you so much for watching any questions do feel free to leave them down in the comment section below we'll do our best to answer them follow us on socials and give this video a like if you like Liked it subs if you loved it and other than that I guess I'll see you on the next video thanks for checking this out peace out guys